Hi and welcome back to the Open Tech Lab. This is the second video in a series of videos I've been doing about the Nix package management system, which is a unique and powerful way of installing software on systems. And today we're looking at Docker and how we can use Nix to create images for Docker containers in a way that is quite improved over the typical approach that one would normally see. So let's begin with a very simple example. So we want to compare how doing things with Nix compares to doing things with traditional Docker files. And so I've created a very simple example that involves the Nginx web server. So you can see the source code of my Docker file here. It bases on Ubuntu LTS, Jammy, and it installs Nginx, and it copies in the HTML code of our very simple website. And then it's going to run Nginx. Uh, and it's going to expose port 80 so that the browser can connect to it. Now, I've already gone ahead and built this thing, so let's go and run it. Now, I am using Podman uh, rather than normal Docker, just because I prefer Podman, but it has the same command interface as Docker. Uh, it's just interesting to use it instead. So let's go ahead and run this up. Now, the, the uh, Docker image is now running in Podman, so we can go in our browser to connect into this uh, port and you can see we've got the Eng Open Tech Lab Nginx Docker example running right here. So let's have another look at the Docker file here. And one thing this Docker file has going for it is simplicity. It is very simple to understand what's going on here. And the core concept of Docker, for those that don't know, is that you build up containers in layers. And each layer adds something or removes something or changes something about the layer underneath. And uh, the, all these layers are added together to give you the container containing everything you want. So of course, as I said, we're starting with a base image that uh, is from Ubuntu LTS. And then we add a layer here, which installs Nginx. Then we add another layer that copies in some HTML. And then these aren't real layers here. They're just uh, bits of metadata. But you understand the principle. Now, what are my complaints about this? Well, the main one is about reproducibility. This Docker file is very vulnerable to either becoming impossible to build at some point in the decent, uh, in the distant future, or at least uh, changing in unexpected ways. I've made every effort to keep this as stable as possible. I based it on an LTS distribution, which should be stable and available for years and years. Although this image here is in the Docker repository, hypothetically, this can actually refer to anything behind the scenes, and anyone could upgrade it to anything in any way. I have no control here over what I'm actually pulling in. And similarly, I've made every effort to be specific about the version of Nginx I want to install. I pinned the version number uh, to the version, the latest version that is available today. And I would like to think that if I were to build this package, this uh, Docker image years from now, I would still be able to get this package if I requested it, but they may well have purged it from the package repository. I have no way of knowing that uh, the package that comes under this label hasn't been changed in some way uh, for who knows what reason. Uh, the, the, you know, the Ubuntu developers are, are pretty reliable, so I'm not expecting problems, but there, there is a gap here. It, I can't prove these things. It's, it's a lot based on my confidence in the Ubuntu developers and what their policies are. So now let's compare how everything's going to look if we do things the Nix way. So as you can see here in the file listing, I've created a Nix flake. So let's have a look at the contents of that file. And you can see we have a single package inside called Docker image. Now it's not called default, so we need to specify it by name. Uh, so we're going to build that uh, Docker image just like this and specify the name. Uh, now that was very quick, it's usually pretty quick, but uh, I tested this just now, so it's also cached, so that makes it even quicker. And if you look now, we have this symbolic link that has appeared, and that symbolic link links off to the Nix store, and there is a tar file, tarball, that has been created there in the Nix store. So next, we can load this uh, tarball up, uh, this image, into Podman, uh, ready for us to run. So if we do podman load and then result, uh, you can see it's going to load all of that data as various layers that are loaded into, um, loaded into podman. And now we can go ahead and run this just as we did before. Map the port 80 to port 8080. 
Uh, the name is a bit different this time, OTL Next Demo. There we go, now that's running. So let's give this another try. Navigate there and you can see we're up and running just the same as we were before. Now, before we move on, it's worth observing the output that Podman made as it imported that image just now. You can see all of these copying blobs. Each of these copying blob messages is a single layer that has been imported into Podman. So you can see this image is made of many, many layers. Uh, Nix has created an image that is made of dozens and dozens of layers all stacked up here. So let's have a look at the code of our Nix Flake here. And the first question to ask is, how does the complexity compare to what we have in the Docker file, which is only 12 lines of code long? Uh, let's have a look at what we have in the Nix Flake. Well, it's 68 lines of code, which is a little bit more complicated, of course, than the Docker file. And part of the complexity comes from the fact that we're building up our Docker image here from scratch. We're not pulling any code from an Ubuntu image or anything like that. It's all being built from scratch. So we don't have as many defaults, which means that we have to define a few things uh, to get everything up and running here, which we didn't have to do with the traditional Docker file. Now, looking at the structure of the Flake file here, you can see the structure is familiar compared to what we had a look at previously. We have the description, and then we have the inputs here, pulling in Nix code from GitHub, and then feeding it in as an argument to the outputs down here. Now, I was harping on uh, reproducibility issues of the Docker file, and so the question is, how is this reproducible in a way that the Docker file is not? Well, this all comes from the flake.lock file here, and this flake.lock file is something that Nix auto-generates the first time you run it, and it contains the hashes and the IDs of all the pieces of external Nix code that are going to be pulled in on the inputs. So we have reference to the git ID of the specific commit we're using uh, of the Nix packages repository. And this means that if we come and build this uh, Docker image uh, months, years from now, it will just get this version of the uh, Nix packages repository and evaluate everything based on that. Now, the packages that we're going to put in, the version of Nginx might not be in the Nix cache anymore, so we might find ourselves having to build it from source and it might, might take a bit longer. And yet Nix is still guaranteeing that even if we do this and uh, build this years from now, we will still be able to get back to the same version of Nginx and the same no uh, Docker image, byte for byte, uh, that we had in the first place. So let's look into a bit more detail about how the Docker image is implemented here. Uh, you can see we have packages and then uh, we are defining this item here, Docker image. And this uh, makes a call to this function in the Docker tools module. Uh, all the Docker stuff is in Docker tools. And we're calling this thing build layered image. And that's where all the layers that we saw in Podman came from. There are two main options for the types of image that Nix Docker tools can build. It can build uh, a single uh, monolithic image where everything is smashed together in a single layer. That's what build image does. I prefer build layered image because it keeps everything separated and allows different Docker images to share things. And I'll talk about a bit more about that in, in a minute. Uh, but it's a little bit confusing because um, the parameters to build layered image and build image are slightly different. Uh, so there's a few gotchas there. So I'm just going to focus on build layered image for this example. So I'm just going to skip over these, uh, uh, these constant values that are defined up the top here and we'll just uh, dive right into the most important part of this, uh, this um, call to build layered image which is this config set down here and this contains these, uh, this command and exposed port keys here and these uh, you can put things in here that roughly correlate with uh, the different directives that you can put in a Docker file. So expose, exposing the port, and command is the program we want to run, and the arguments to feed into. Uh, these are similar to what we see here in this config section. Now, what is really interesting about this, um, and really shows the functional aspect of what we're doing here, is that we don't have to explicitly list out the contents of what is going into our Docker image by merely referencing things, uh, Nix will automatically pull in those things into our Docker image. So for example, uh, we have our Nginx here, uh, the Nginx package, and I've used this thing here called an anti-quote, uh, which is just a way of um, 
inserting the results of Nick's evaluations into a string. Uh, and so the packages.nginx is going to give us the path of where nginx is installed in the Docker image. And so this is going to give us the path that we can run nginx from in our Docker image. But it also means that because we referenced it, it's going to be installed into our Docker image. Similarly, uh, we've got this guy nginx.conf. Now I needed to specify a configuration file to tell uh, nginx what to do. Uh, I was able to do it on the command line uh, over here in the Docker image. I could just do it directly. But I've got a bit more to say because I have less defaults here. So I've used a config file. And this needs to be created inside the Docker image. And uh, it needs to contain this text. And uh, in the same way, this is a derivation again. And by referencing this nginx conf derivation, it will be installed uh, into our Docker image. Uh, the text file will be installed into it, but also the path of that uh, uh, nginx config file will be fed into nginx. It's very cool. Now, what I've actually done here is specified the username of who is going to be running nginx, uh, some things to keep nginx happy, the nginx port, which is defined here, so I don't have to repeat myself. Do not repeat yourself. It's always bad. And then uh, another clever little bit of Nick's functional stuff is that I want to pull in the actual code of our HTML website. And uh, in the same way as I'm pulling derivations in, I can also uh, do this here. Well, HTML refers to the code that is in the local Git repository adjacent to this Flake Nix file. Um, but I want this to be installed into my Docker image. Now, what Nix is going to do is take the HTML code and copy it into the Nix store, uh, and it will be bundled up with all the other software and everything else. And so by me referencing it here, this, uh, this relative reference to this code inside the Git repository gets copied into the store and then resolves as a path, which gets copied into the config file. And then this config file gets copied into the Nix store. And then the reference to its location gets fed into this argument at the end here that gets fed into Nginx. Understand? It's, uh, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit much to get your head around. But basically, everything is just being created because we're referencing it, which is very cool. And then this little block in the middle adds us to add a few more bits and pieces, a few more derivations that need to be added into our Docker image. Uh, we have to create the users and groups. We have to create our Nginx user here. So I've just done it by creating the user group and shadow files here uh, manually. And similarly, there's a couple of directories that Nginx is expecting to be present. So we're creating those here. Now, if you'd like to know more about how Nix goes about making layered Docker images, I really recommend this blog post by Graham Christensen, where he lays out how it all works. The basic concern here is that in Docker, the layers of an image are all content addressable. So if you have two, two Docker containers that share a large amount of code, many layers, then Docker is able to deduplicate those, which reduces push and pull times and reduces storage because layers that are the same between two containers can be shared. And uh, Nix uh, wants to take advantage of this concept. And the way to do it, it, ideally, would be to take every single derivation that you want to put in your container and just make a Docker image layer out of every single one in a flat list. So um, a Docker image is a graph, and we can just flatten it, ideally, into a linear stack. Unfortunately, there is a problem, and that problem is that Docker has a limit on the number of layers you're allowed to have. That you can't make a Docker image with more than 125 layers. And for this reason, there is a problem, because many Docker images that you could make with Nix would have more derivations in them than 125, because everything in, in Nix is so granular. Even with quite simple images, you could easily go over that limit. And so the solution Nix has is a very clever algorithm uh, that this blog post lays out, where Nix looks at the likelihood that a given layer could be shared with other Docker images and prioritizes those to be broken out into their own layers. And then anything that's left over at the end just gets smushed together into a big leftovers layer that stacks on the top. It's very neat, it's very clever, and it works very well. So that covers the most common use case of Docker containers, where we want to bundle up some application or a network service or something like that inside a containerized environment. 
But there is also another use case that I use very often for software development, where we want to create a containerized environment that contains all the build tools necessary to build some software. So this is very helpful for developers to provide a consistent development environment. And it's also very useful for build servers. You can create these environments that the build server can use to build your software. Now, there is some really new stuff that's been added to Nix, the Nix Packages uh, repository very recently to enable this. It's really cool and it's very simple, so let's take a look. Okay, so to demonstrate this, we're back here once again with the C++ example we had in the previous video. And if you remember, this is a very simple application that links to Boost and it links to SDL, and it just prints the version numbers of these two libraries out and then exits. And what we had, we had this flake that has the capabilities of building this application and creating development environments for it and running it. And uh, that's what this uh, default package is here in the middle. Now, we're going to amend this Nix Flake to give it the ability to, in addition to building that package, it will also have the ability to build a Docker image. Now, to achieve this, we're going to rely on an unreleased feature of the Nix Packages repository. Uh, you can access it in the unstable build of Nix Packages. And so we can add this as an additional input here at the top, unstable, and this sh it shows how we can mix and match different versions of the Nix packages repository together within one flake. And it works perfectly well in most cases, certainly in this case. So we can just load in both versions of the repository side by side. There we are. Okay, and now we're in a position to start defining this Docker tools package. So we can just go down here and uh, add the new package, docker image. And we're gonna be using packages unstable, docker tools as before. Now, instead of build layered image, it's build Nix shell image. So we're gonna build this image that has all the Nix machinery necessary to create a build environment that is equivalent to a development shell. So we'll just do tag equals latest. And then we just need to specify the derivation that uh, this, this Docker image is going to have the capability to build. So we can just specify default, which is up here. And this is why we added rec to the start of this set, which allows this second package to reference the first one. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to do to improve it. Um, I want to add this override atras uh, method call here. And what we want to do with this is we're going to use this to override the source code and to set it to null. And the reason is because if we don't do this, it will take the source code of our application and bundle it inside the Docker image along with all the build dependencies. Now, you might want to do this in many cases, but for my use cases, I don't want the source code of the application bundled into the build image. That will be provided into the, um, the image externally when we actually want to do the build. So with that, let's go ahead and check whether I got everything right. No, no typos. Of course there's typos. All fixed now. Okay, so uh, you can see now that the Flake now contains the default package as before, but also we now have this Docker image package. And so now we can do uh, nix build dot hash docker image and there we go now with that docker image is built just as before and we can see that we have the results so we can do podman load and load the result into podman very similar to what we saw before there we are and now the image that we just created is loaded into podman so now we can run it so let's do podman uh, run uh, we want to run an interact session, delete the container when we're done, and we need to do a file mapping. So we're going to map the local directory because it contains the source code, and we're going to map that into the image. And we want to run otl nix test app env latest. 
There we are, and now we're sitting in that build environment that we wanted, and you can see the C++ example code has been mapped in by the podman command. So let's go ahead and create a build directory, enter into that, activate CMake again. So we get our make file, we can run make. There you go. So the uh, Docker image here has created a build environment in which we can build our application uh, using Nix. All very nice. Now, so far, we've only created Docker images that have software installed by Nix. None of them have the Nix database itself or the Nix package manager installed inside. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would you want Nix installed in a Docker image? Well, one simple example is cases where you want to make a Docker image that can make more Nix Docker images. Maybe it can build itself. Uh, like a bootstrapping thing, or it can build other Docker images. And with a focus on build servers, this is a very useful case. You want to have build jobs that can build your software, but you also want to have build jobs that can build the Docker images that build your software. So let's have a look at how we can achieve this. So as before, let's see how this works in action, and then we'll look at how it works. So we've got the flake nix file as before. So we can do nix flake show to see what, it's in, what is inside. And there's the dev shell I've added to this, which I'll come to in a minute. And then the main thing is that we create this Docker nix bootstrap a Docker image, and that is the package that this, this flake creates. So let's go ahead and try making it build. So let's go nix build. And you can see as before, we have a cache here and we have our image created very quickly just from the cache. So we can go ahead and load that into Podman or of course into real Docker if you prefer it. And there we are, we're loaded. So now let's try running this image that we've created. So we can go Podman run rm just tidies up after we're done and then we need to do a file mapping build docker nix bootstrap basically mapping the directory we're sitting in into the image when we run it and then we can select the image that we just built there we are we're now sitting inside of it and if we do go into the maps directory here you can see we're now sitting inside the project directory uh, but this time inside the container now, the real trick here is, the real question is, can we now use this uh, flake? Can we use Nix to build the Docker image itself inside the image? Now, of course, we won't have the benefit of the cache this time, so it'll take a bit, little bit longer. So let's go ahead and do the build. So we have to do a few things. First, it's gonna download the Nix source code, and then it's gonna evaluate it, and then it's gonna download all the things that we wanna install into the Docker image. So let's come back and have a look at the results when we're done. And we're done, and you can see here we've got the symbolic link, uh, the result which points at the Docker image that we just created, which should be identical to the Docker image that we're sitting in already. So we've closed the loop. And of course, this Docker image uh, is also going to be useful for creating other Docker images with Nix. So we can use this one Docker container to create any Docker image that we might need for any purpose. Very, very handy tool. So now let's try something else. So I want to take this Docker image that I've just created and I want to upload it into Docker Hub. Now, in this example, I haven't been using uh, the real Docker tools. I've been using the compatible OCI tools. Uh, they have the same interface as uh, normal Docker, just I prefer them for various reasons. So if you're not using the native Docker, uh, the Docker suite, instead uh, using Podman, the tool for pushing and pulling and copying Docker images around the place uh, is Scopio. So I'm going to use Scopio to push this image into Docker Hub. So the first thing we need to use is Scopio, uh, Scopio login with my username and then push into Docker IO and we're logged in. Okay, so now let's go ahead and copy that and we can do Docker archive and then point at the result archive we just made and then send that into the Docker, the address of the uh, Docker repository for this project. So let's send that in there. Now it's fairly large, so this is gonna take a couple of minutes to get sent up there. 
and we're done. So now the image is uploaded into Docker Hub and of course you can pull it down and use it in your own projects if you want to. Uh, I don't make any promises about keeping it up to date or anything so perhaps if there's a volunteer out there who wants to keep this thing regular updated with some build automation or something uh, maybe that would be a good little project. So let's have a look at the contents of this flake and of course we have the normal structure, we're pulling in inputs, we need source code from both Nix packages and Unstable and the utils, feed this into the outputs function. Now the heart of all this is this build image with NixDB function and this is a uh, feature that is also available in Docker tools and it does what the name suggests, it's going to copy make a flat image with the NixDB embedded inside it. Now I do find this thing a little bit uh, sketchy, it does seem like it's not quite as simple as just calling this, we also uh, have to do several things to make sure Nix is actually going to work. So there are a few extra things that we have to copy in and set up in order for this uh, bootstrapping self-building process to actually be workable. So we're going to go down here and have a look what's inside. So of course we have the tools that we need. We have Scopio, we just used it. Git is need for needed for flakes and core utils, SSL certificates and uh, Nix itself so that it can actually run inside the image. Now we're setting up users again. Now in the previous example I just created the files direct uh, directly but in new versions of Nix packages, fake, there's this thing called fake NSS, which has this new feature called extra password lines and extra group lines. So doing, creating our users and groups this way is slightly more concise and convenient than the way I showed earlier, where all the files are just created manually. We also have to create a file here to configure Nix so that we get flakes enabled and disable sandboxing which is necessary if you're running uh, Nix inside a container already. Uh, sandbox is using container technology, uh, look it up it's quite interesting. And then there's a couple of other bits and pieces we need to create to keep uh, Nix happy. And then if we go down to the bottom here uh, just uh, uh, using Bash as the interactive environment. So I won't go through this in much more detail, but if you're interested in understanding more about how this whole thing works, have a look at the code on GitHub. And I'll just mention as well at the bottom, we've got this dev shell here, which just includes Scopio in it. And that means that if you run Nix develop, you'll be able to have an environment that has Scopio inside of it, which is useful if you're going to be building these images. Well that about wraps it up for this video, I hope you found the content really interesting. If you'd like to have a closer look at some of the details, check out the show notes and the link is down there somewhere and you'll find all the code that I've covered and links to various useful things in there. And do leave a comment, I read all the comments, leave a like. I think we'll do a couple more videos on the subject of Nix, there's a few more things to say. And so I hopefully will see you then next time on the Open Tech Lab.